Hi, welcome to BuffZone.com. My name is Kyle Ringo. I'm the CU beat writer for the Daily Camera newspaper. With me today in all his glory is Neil Welk, veteran sports columnist for the Daily Camera. We ended last week's show with Neil talking about the Buffs bowl possibilities. Neil, what do you have to say this week? Kyle, I'm always optimistic. You know, this, this is time for the Buffaloes to embrace history. They've lost 10 in a row. Now it's time to turn it around, win six straight, go to the Big 12 championship game, win that game, and play in the BCS bowl game. Why the bag, Neil? Well, I mean, it, the other part of this is, Kyle, is this team is on the, on the verge of history. They've tied the school record for the most losses in a row. And uh, if, if you look at it that way, this team also has a chance to go ahead and go 0-12, something that's never been done in the history of Colorado football. So are you going to do the whole show with the bag on your head? No, Kyle. I'm going to, I'm, I, I'm going to return to my optimistic form. I believe these guys are, are still you know, ha on the verge of being a pretty good football team. I think they have a chance to win some games. But then again, there is that, that uh, historic streak that, it, that awaits them. History is beckoning to this team. And, and now I'm torn between do you, do you sit here and wait for them to go 0-12? Do you wait for them to lose another game and, and then establish the school record for the most losses in a row? And then do you wait and see if they can lose all 12 games this year? Neil, you're right. It has been a historic 10 games. The Buffs haven't won in nearly a year now. It all started last uh, November in Iowa State when a cyclone literally almost took out the stadium before the game started. The Buffs came apart at the end of that game and lost to Iowa State. They proceeded to lose at home to Nebraska 70-3 to against Texas in the Big 12 championship game. Some of, these, some of these games have been historic all by themselves, but when you put them all together in a 10-game losing streak, you know, the Buffs lost to Montana State, the first 1AA team they've ever played. They lost to in-state rival, rival Colorado State. They get their hearts broken at Georgia. They get their hearts broken again this week, or last week, I should say, against Baylor, which has been the dregs of the Big 12 Conference now for 11 years. Yeah, when you look at it, there's been the, the number of games they've lost is, is astounding in itself, 10 in a row. But when you look at the way they've lost some of those games, that's even more amazing because, like you said, it's, gone, it's run the gamut from 70 to 3 getting beat by Texas to a triple overtime loss to Baylor. You play, they lost to the national champions. They lost to the worst program in the history of the Big 12. Uh, where they go from here is a, this is this is a very very interesting game. It, it's it's almost like people have said it's like watching a car wreck. They sit there and they stare at it and they want to turn their heads, but they can't. They keep on staring and thinking, okay, what's going to happen next? You know, they, where's the next bloody body going to be pulled yeah, out of this car? They find a way to lose, a different way to lose every week. It seems. And another historic component to this whole thing is that it involved a coaching change. I mean, the 70-3 to loss and the 30-3 to loss to Nebraska last year, uh, you know, directly led to Gary Barnett being fired and, and Hawk being hired. And uh, now Dan Hawkins is in the middle of October of his first season, and he still hasn't won a game. And this is tough on Hawkins. This is Dan Hawkins is a guy who lost 11 games total. As, his, as a head coach at Boise State, he's already lost six this year. Uh, there's a good chance it could get to 11 again this year. You know, he could match his entire career loss per, number of losses in one season. You at really Colorado. think that's going to happen? I think it's possible. I think you know, take a look at the schedule and say, okay, which games do the Buffs have a chance of winning going down the stretch here? They've got six games left. Uh, Oklahoma, you know, there's not a good chance of winning that that's game. That's at Oklahoma. That's at Oklahoma. They have to go to Nebraska. You know, Nebraska's playing very well. Uh, you know, do you think they can go up to Nebraska and win the games that they have left? Texas Tech, Iowa State, Kansas State, and Kansas. Out of those games, there's a possibility they could win two or three of those games. But given what has happened, and you said it, they're finding ways to lose. I mean, they, they had a fourth and seven against Baylor. They have to stop Baylor one play. Right. Fourth and seven, stop that in, play. In the second overtime. In the second overtime, game's over. Right. And what happened? Baylor throws a touchdown pass. There are just all those kind of things happen. You go back to the Georgia game, you know, they've got a 13-7 to lead. All they have to do is they've gotten the first down, kick a field goal, they win. What happens? A fumble. They lose the ball. They don't get that nine-point lead. Georgia comes back and scores. You know, I've been asked over the last couple of days by a number of different people if I believe, when I believe, the Buffs will end this losing streak and if I believe they will this season. And I've been telling people, I think they could, they could win every game this, 
you know, every game remaining on their schedule because they've been in every game they've played this year against some pretty good teams. And uh, But I also believe that they could lose every game. I mean, this team does not know how to win a game right now. That's the biggest thing. They don't know how to win. They've forgotten what it's like to walk off the field and feel like winners. They've forgotten what it's like to make that play that makes the difference between winning and losing. They haven't done that. I mean, you can go back and point to four or five of the games this year that if they make one or two plays, one or two plays, they probably win those games, and they haven't made them, and it's compounding itself. It's a snowball that's going downhill. They could win this weekend against Texas Tech. Texas Tech is not a great team. Uh, there was a lot of, of uh, hoopla about Texas Tech before the year, but the Texas Tech's a team that got beat 12-3 to by TCU. Texas Tech is a team that got drilled last weekend by Missouri, and so, no, I don't think that there's a, you can say Texas Tech is going to definitely come in here and run roughshod over the Buffalo. But are they going to win? Come back next week and we'll find out what new headgear Neil Welk has.